Well, there are many ingredients to a healthy life. For example, eating right, doing physical activity, and trying to stress less. But there are times when we need that little extra help from medicines. Not long ago, this happened to me. And soon after, this. I was given antibiotics and 10 days later, all my symptoms were gone. The question is, how? Well, let's go and learn some more about antibiotics. Hi. Hi. Can we take a look at this? Yeah. Let's see what it looks like. All right. Oh, fine. Yeah? Yes. All gone? All gone. No healthy. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Bye. Right. Well, the reason I got antibiotics in the first place was because I had the symptoms of Lyme disease, which is caused by a bacteria that is transferred by ticks, and it can cause pretty big problems if it's left untreated. The antibiotics stopped my bacterial infection, but the other cells in my body were obviously not affected. How does this work? So the word antibiotics literally means against life. But we are of course not interested in wiping out all life, only certain infections. So the trick is to find a way to kill only those bad bacteria. To learn some more, I meet up with Christina Hedfalk. My name is Christina Hedfalk and I'm a researcher in biochemistry at the University of Gothenburg. Antibiotics can have different actions on a bacterial cell. One thing is that the cell wall present in the bacterial cell is not present here, so that is something that, that can be targeted. Uh, and also the mechanism of protein synthesis is also one very common action mechanism of antibiotics. So let's revise this first. Animal cells and bacterial cells have many differences. Besides the fact that bacteria are much smaller, some of these differences can then be targeted so the antibiotic only harm the bacteria. For example, both bacterial cells and animal cells have DNA, although in animal cells it is enclosed in what is called a nucleus. But the DNA do the same job in both. It codes for the production of proteins, called protein synthesis. No matter if it's a bacterial cell, or if it's a mammalian cell, or a plant cell, there's a lot of activities going on here to keep the cells alive and the organism alive. And for this to happen, you need proteins, because proteins are the units that do or perform all the functions in the cell. Okay, so pretty important, then, right? And if we were to interrupt a step in this process, we would pretty much stop the whole cell to function. So, if we wanted to design an antibiotic that targets the protein synthesis, we would first need to fully understand this process. Protein synthesis starts with the DNA being transcribed to RNA. The RNA is then read, or translated by ribosomes, which are actually proteins themselves. The ribosomes then add amino acids together, in the order the RNA is coded, to form a specific protein. Some antibiotics we use today, like the one Jonas got for his Lyme disease, target the function of the bacterial ribosomes, and the bacteria die. But luckily, these antibiotics do not accumulate in the human cell and harm us. Okay, so all this sounds pretty straightforward, right? As soon as we get a bacterial infection, we'll just take antibiotics, right? Well, unfortunately, a big problem right now is bacteria developing a resistance towards the available antibiotics. So antibiotic resistance, that means that there are bacteria that can survive even if the antibiotic is present. So that means that antibiotic is not effective. Okay, let's try to explain this. If an infection was only one or a few bacteria, it would be pretty easy to get rid of. But instead, it involves millions of bacteria, and they multiply extremely fast and not always exactly the same. When we have a large population size like this, there's a bigger chance, or risk in this case, that one will develop a certain characteristic that could result in resistance towards the antibiotic. So this is becoming a big problem now, and a lot of research is going on to find new and improved ways to fight bacterial infections. And now we know that the key to an effective antibiotic lies in the research behind finding a proper target that affects only the bad bacteria. But so far, we have to think about only using antibiotics when we really have to. 
Plus remember that there's a lot of good bacteria in our bodies too that we don't want to disturb unless it's really necessary. So we know that a healthy life involves several things. But sometimes we do need to take medicines. And if it wasn't for chemical research, we wouldn't have many of the medicines we have today. But it's not over. Every day lives are lost because of health-related issues and diseases. So the important research continues. And this might be something you can help with in the future. So remember, chemistry is all around you.